Hey guys, it's Big Little Game Hunter here, coming to you live from my kitchen. But I figured I'd throw together a real quick review for you on a squirrel call. Pretty cool little dude. Uh, I tried it out in the woods today, didn't have any luck. Knew they were there, saw they were there. The woods were too thick where I was at. Heard them down over the hill. Pretty good day anyway. Any day in the woods is a good day, so hey. And here it is. It is a Primo's Squirrel Buster. I'm not lying. You can read it right there. Little picture of the squirrel dude. Squirrel call. Didn't even know they made them. Checked them out. Started checking them out. Uh, a few years ago, I was looking at turkey calls because I thought I'd get interested in those. And saw some videos on YouTube. Been looking them up. And I got them at my local Magic Mart for $13. No free promotions on this channel. If you want to buy something else, please feel free to do so. No free promotions. But yeah, this dude has five calls, so it's awesome. Awesomeness. Not in a box. But yeah, the only call that I know of that this squirrel call does not have is a cutter call. Like when a squirrel would be up high in the tree and it cuts a nut up here. And then the nut just drops to the ground where he can come and get it later. And to do that, you need to have some kind of rough surface rubbing against each other. Like two quarter edges or something like that. Which you can also do with a threaded all rod and just a washer. Which I saw from another guy's video. You've probably seen it if you're watching this. Don't remember, I'll try to give him credit later in the comments. But yeah. So, I'm going to give you a review on what all this does and how to do it. But, yeah. First, I'm going to show you the box. It's all crinkled up because I tried to get it out like a dummy. And my receipt, yeah. says right there, Squirrel Buster, right on the side. Primo's. If you can see it under the price sticker. Primo's. Backwards. But, yeah, on the back it says, Instructions and Exercises. Descript distress call which would be a baby squirrel in distress simply blow air into the open end of the call like this just like a squeaker toy like in your dog's toy but this one if you inhale it doesn't do anything you've got to exhale through the little tubey thing cause your reed is going to be right there it's going to be just like the squeaker in your dog's toy, but it's in the side and it's got a different frequency and everything like that. So it's supposed to sound just like a baby squirrel in distress, and this works a lot better with red squirrels because they're more defensive. And you can also take a tree branch and slap it against your leg while doing that, and it'll sound like a hawk attacking it and bringing it to the ground. But I'll give you a demonstration here in a minute. It says... Make sure you do not cover the small hole in the barrel that I just showed you. You should make a series of 3 to 5 long squeals, 2 to 3 seconds, then 10 to 15 short squeals, shorter squeals, 1 second long or shorter. So you want to make it sound like it's losing its air, something's got a hold of it compressing it. I'll try to give you a demonstration without being too loud because everybody's sleeping. So. I didn't do that real great, but can't be too loud. But yeah, that's a baby squirrel in distress. You can also take and hold this down and do that. So if you don't want to use the mouthpiece if somebody else has already used it and you're using somebody else's call or something like that but another call that this has is a gray squirrel bark hold the call between your thumb and forefinger like this right her and something that I found is you want to make sure that you cover up the plastic hole on the side because it's got a metal reed on the inside which makes that sound and that sound so even if this gets covered up, it's not going to impede it too bad. But if you cover it up and don't have that hole covered up, 
it's going to impede it. So it's not going to sound right. You're not going to be able to call successfully. It says, hold it between your thumb and forefinger and all that. Tap the bellow end of the call in this rhythm. Tap, 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 tap. Then press down the bellow all the way in and release it two times. This produces the bark and squeal characteristics of a gray squirrel. So to give you a demonstration, I'm going to hold it up there so that I can get it just right. I'm going to push it down all the way and make sure you don't push too hard because when it comes up that thing is still going to be compressed well it didn't that time because mine's kind of worn out but you want to work with this and practice when you first get it so that everything's worked out and this one's kind of worked loose when I first got it and you press it down really hard right here it wouldn't pop back loose like if you push down really hard at it which I was slamming it down to get it to bounce back up it pops and you don't want to do that because you want to have it one continuous sound and for the fox squirrel bark you do the same exact thing you just cover it up and I found you don't want to cover up the whole sound because it's going to sound like this and it's not going to carry very loud very long you just want a deeper a more aggressive sound for a fox squirrel so you just cover it up slightly I've got a small hole probably about the diameter of a centimeter and very small holes in between the grip and my fingers so <laughs> rather than you just want a deeper more aggressive sound and for a chatter or alarm call of an adult squirrel you simply hold it between your forefingers and shake it back and forth and you're going to do the same thing that you would for a bark with a red squirrel cover the sky up that's a red squirrel that's a gray squirrel red squirrel gray squirrel but yeah another thing that I've found if you're carrying this through the woods you want to be careful because if it just gets slightly tapped on something it's gonna make a sound or if this ends covered up like I was showing you <coughs> gonna make the squeaking sound which is gonna alarm them and alert them to your presence and where exactly that you're at because they're gonna be listening for that at all times so a quick way that you can cover that up I have right here a knife pretty nice little whatever it is don't know one of those little finger holders you can just put in your hands really easily and I have some electrical tape yeah magic tape but I'm gonna go ahead and since I've already cut one small piece this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and cover up this end so that it doesn't do that. But in saying that, you need to cover up something else so that it doesn't make that sound. So I'm gonna get a strip real quick, just about five seconds, just a little bit, guys. Uh, reflecting time. Reflecting time. Sorry, guys. Uh, just let me cut off a little small piece. And there we go. I've got it. Yeah, you're back. Okay. So, this little dude that makes the sound. And also, you want to make sure it's tight because when it bounces back, it's still going to make a sound. So, you just want to make sure it's tightly sealed off. And the same with the squeaker call thing in the end. So you can see that that's tightly sealed off. No air is going to go back and forth. You can see that that's tightly sealed off. 
you can see it pushing through you can see this pushing in so that when you cover it all the holes it can push through but yeah guys it's not going to make a sound look here compress it all the way down if you're that scared about it and just make sure all the air is covered up that way there's no way it can make a sound when you're cover walking through the woods and I wouldn't leave it compressed for long periods of time because it's going to wear out your uh, rubber and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm going to do a review on my hunting guns and everything about it in the woods and stuff. But that was just quickly how you're pretty much going to carry it in the woods. I learned today, you don't want to carry it around because I've got this nice purty full strap right there. If you can see it, I'm not sure. And my... 17 HMR which I was hunting with and a 410 I'll do a review on those here in just a second but yeah you don't wanna carry this through the woods without the holes covered up and possibly it compressed because it's gonna push through the tape and that's pretty much it guys comment like and subscribe tell me what you think